Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 19 through 25. I don't care if I take off my coat to eat, but I'm hot. <laughs> Romans chapter 7, I'm going to read verses 19 through 25, and then Romans 8, verses 1 and 2. So please stand on and read God's Word. Romans 7, verses 19 through 25. I hope you brought your Bible. Amen. If you did, you got to take my word for it. Yep. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 7, verse 19. We can all say this, for the good that I would, I do not. Amen. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? With a question mark, look what he said. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Father, yeah. we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. The only freedom we have in this world is through Him. We thank you that you loved us so much that you were sending God to us. We thank, I thank you, God, that He loved us so much that He would allow Himself to be crucified for our sins. Amen. This is your message today, God. And Father, there are broken ones all over our congregation, people having trouble. People struggling, all kinds of things going on in their life, and we thank you. Amen. As that song said, God, you have a willing heart and a tender touch. Yeah. We thank you for that. And you say to this congregation, come on in. Amen. We ask it on the name of Jesus Christ today. Amen and amen. amen. Now flip over your Bible to Galatians chapter 1. Thank you for standing on and reading God's Word. Amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and then I'm going to move down to verse 13. He says first in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, which means freedom, wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Now, Galatians 3.13 tells us that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. So we are under grace. We're not under the law. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The law of grace is what set me free from my sin debt and you from yours if you're saved today. Amen. And if you're not, you need to ABC. Admit you're a sinner. Believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Confess your sins. And you'll be just as saved as every other member of heaven itself today. Amen. But he talks about this yoke of bondage. He's talking about of the law. Yoke of bondage of the law. The law brings a bondage. Um, and and I, I use this example all the time. The law, uh, when you're going down the interstate and you look and you see those signs, that is the law. That tells you how fast that you are supposed to go. The reason that Christ came to do what he did is because we don't obey the law. Yeah. We cannot live perfect. <laughs> if it says you're supposed to go 55 and you go 56, you broke broken the law, amen? Amen? Yeah, amen. And if you drive like my wife and she sets her cruise on 78 instead of 70, she's breaking the law, amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? I don't recall if I speed or not, but I guess I do. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> amen? <laughs> I'm going to be careful. The Lord's going to strike me down, amen? <laughs> but we can't, we, we, we just can't do that. 
We are born into sin, and so therefore we are continually breaking God's laws. And so Christ came and redeemed us from that. He paid for our sin debt. Verse 13 of Galatians 5 said, For brethren, you've been called to liberty, or in other words, freedom. Use not that liberty, though, for an occasion to the flesh, but by love, serve one another. Sometimes there are folks that claim to be believers in Jesus Christ. They use the freedom that they have to commit whatever sin that they want to, and they think that God's okay with that. They're wrong because that slaps God in the face himself, and it gives no respect for the cross for our sin debt was paid. Amen? Right. Amen? Our freedom is not a liberty for us to sin. We're set free from the punishment of sin because of what Christ did for us, but we're set free to serve him. Amen. We're not under the thumb of the law. Verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. John 15, 12 said, This is my commandment, not a suggestion. This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. What a challenge to every believer in Jesus Christ that we were to love people the way that Jesus does. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And we don't. Right. We don't. Why do you think he would include that verse in verse 15 of Galatians 5? But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. He's just saying, as long as you're at odds with each other, all you're doing is eating each other up. You're consuming each other. You're not accomplishing anything for God. He's speaking to the church. And I believe that message would work today for this church as well. All churches. Amen? Amen. Moving down to verse 16. I have some more I'm getting to. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So what you need to understand today is that your body, my body, is neutral. My body is neutral. What, what promotes me to sin is the, the spirit of Satan himself that, that causes my flesh to lust. But the flesh itself only obeys what enters into the mind. This, this body is neutral. This is not the problem. If the sin that's in this body right. is the problem. And the body reacts to that. But if we're controlled by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit lets you know what you're supposed to do and then lets you know what you did wrong afterwards. But the Holy Spirit comes from God and loves you. The difference in those two things. The flesh lusts against the Spirit, verse 17, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to the other, so you cannot do the things that you would. What he's trying to, he's trying to help explain, verse 16, he said, look, these things are very opposite. The Spirit of God and the Spirit of disobedience, which is the Spirit of Satan, they're completely opposite from each other. God cannot do anything but tell the truth. Satan cannot do anything but tell a lie. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And so when, when you listen to the flesh and obey what Satan is getting tempting you to do, then you're obeying the flesh, and you're, a child, you're, you're obeying disobedience. But if you obey God, you're obeying what the Spirit of God is telling you to do. You need the Holy Spirit in you to know the difference. Amen? Yeah. Look at your Bible, now, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. It's a good example for us to understand the difference of what he's talking about. Sheep are clean animals. There's no wonder that God calls his people his sheep. When he cleans us up and saves our soul and changes our everything about us, starting on the inside, he calls us his sheep. You're not a filthy animal. But dogs and pigs, pretty nasty, amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Look what the Bible says about the difference here. Second Peter chapter 2. I'm going to back all the way up to see about verse 17. So he's talking about these. He said, These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Hell itself. When they speak great swelling words of vanity, which means pride, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise themselves liberty or freedom, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought into bondage. 
You're your slave. Whatever overcomes you, that's what you're a slave to. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, now this doesn't mean you're saved, listen to this now, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen, you can know all about Christ, but unless you ask Him into your heart, you're not saved. Amen? Amen. Okay. They are again entangled therein and overcome, and the latter end of them is worse than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. I'm not trying to be gross, but I had a dog like that. The sow that was washed in her wallowing in the mire. In other words, dirty all over again. Until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to continue to return back to your old ways all the time. Like a dog returned to something that made him sick. Sin, you may not know this, but sin makes you sick. Amen? Amen? Amen. It makes you sick. Let's move on. He said that these things are contrary, so you don't do the thing that, that you would or that you should do. But if you be led by the Spirit, verse 18, you're not under the law. The works of the flesh, uh, it said the works of the flesh are manifest. In other words, they're seen. In other words, you can't have a work of the flesh inside of you. You can't have Satan himself living inside of you through a, a, you know, that the fact that you're a child of disobedience. Without It's going to come out and other people are going to see it. If you have Christ living inside of your heart, the Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. They're going to be able to see that too as well. You cannot hide your sin. Amen? Amen? Right. God's not going to allow that. It's going to be seen. So he lists some of these things. The first one, uh, <clears throat> these are sensual sins, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. These aren't going to remain hidden. Idolatry is when uh, you, you worship anything except God himself. People do that with their time. They do that with their finances. They do that with their life. They do that with their hobbies. Amen? And witchcraft. The Greek word pharmacia, which in other words represents drugs. Witchcraft. They would, they would use drugs maybe even back in those days to bring about witchcraft. In other words, for you to get high enough on whatever drug they had to cause you to see things that you would not normally see. And, do th and that's, that's still true today. Hatred, which means a social sickness, whether it is people of a different color, a different race. God says these, these, are, these are fruits of someone that's lost. Various emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. We move on. Envy, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. In other words, the revelings mean that are, they, these are parties. These are folks that see no harm in Give the party. God sees harm in it. Of a which I tell you before, Paul says, as I have already told you, I told you in time past that they which do, which means practice in this verse, those that practice these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's a practice. It's not a one-time act. So you don't have to live in fear if you slip up and commit one of those sins. Yes, God to forgive you of it and move on in your life. But if you habitually do these things continually, that, that is a sign that you may not believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Amen. These aren't supposed to be our habits. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is different than that. Look at the fruit of the Spirit in verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Now, all these things... Let me read on. Meekness, temperance, against such that there is no law. There's no law against that. But all these things that you see, whether it's joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, all these things, they were all born out of love. If you don't have the love of Christ in you, then you won't be long suffering. You won't be gentle. You won't have goodness like you need to have. You won't have the faith that you need. And you, you won't have any temperance. In other words, he's saying, look, somebody that's not long suffering, I mean, that, there's no forgiveness with that person. They don't forgive anybody for anything. They, they don't dwell on it and see what the Holy Spirit says, how to react. They react automatically. 
get somebody back. Gentleness, goodness, faith. But here's what we're going to focus on just for a minute. The word meekness. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. Amen. Glasses are frogging up. Does anybody here realize that meekness is not a weakness? Does anybody realize what Jesus endured for us? Mm -hmm. Amen? Look at Isaiah 52 quickly in your Bible. Isaiah 52. Verse 14. Prophecy about what's going to happen to Jesus Christ. As many are worth a stony, which means astonished at thee, his visage or know his appearance was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. In other words, when Jesus Christ was scourged, he wasn't even recognizable as a human being. He was so covered in blood, they did not even recognize who he was. He didn't even look like a man anymore. Verse 53. Excuse me, chapter 53 and verse 3. He despised and rejected a man, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened on his mouth. Yet he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before her shears is done. So he opened on his mouth. Verse 13. Verse 12, excuse me. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great He'll divide the spoil with the strong because he's poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. You know who that is? That's us. Amen. We're the transgressors. We're the ones that, that trampled over God's laws. We trespassed over. That's what the word transgress means in that. Now, does that sound like anybody that's, that's weak to you, that tolerated all these things, but yet... Before he took his last breath, he said, Father, forgive him. I don't believe he was weak. Right. Just because he's meek does not believe does not mean that he's weak. Amen. When's the last time somebody accused you, did something to you, and you took it and you didn't immediately get so angry you couldn't see straight? Amen? Amen? Amen. They slapped him with her open hand while he was blindfolded, hit him with her fist. I've preached this before. Only one time in that whole experience did ever Jesus ever say, why? We say, why when somebody just says one little thing to us? Amen? Amen. We get upset and we get so aggravated, but yet he, he endured the cross for us. Our sin death, our mistakes, our flaws, our failures. But look what he said there in that passage. He made intercession for the transgressors. In other words, he took our place. This is what we deserve. Right. But he took our place. He took my place as well as yours. How would you handle it when somebody were to hit you? you blow up in one second. Right. Amen. You can't get through traffic in a day without getting mad at the guy in front of you, the guy beside you, and the woman behind you. Amen? Amen? Yep. People at work hurt us. I've been hurt at work. I've been hurt deeply. It gets to us. It bothers us to the point that we don't know how to handle our, our anger. You know, the Bible said when they drove hand, nails in his hands and his feet and they'd been to accuse him, they'd already stripped him naked and put 
a little bit of his clothes back on him, that they yelled all kinds of things to Jesus Christ. He said, if you're who you say you are, come down off of that cross. And he was doing it for them. Right. Doing it for them. Mm -hmm. Doing it for us. Yeah. So when the Bible says when he was reviled, he didn't revile back. Amen? Amen. Not, <clears throat> I'm kind of up, up against it at my house right now. I've got two females and me. Amen? Yeah. I'm not going to start an argument with two sisters. Amen? I've got my den. I go in there and shut my door. Amen? <laughs> and I get along fine with me. <laughs> Amen? It's rare that I have an argument with me. Amen? But we come together at mealtime after the drive through <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen? After we get aggravated at the drive through don't you get aggravated at the drive through <laughs> Amen? <laughs> McDonald's has had the same menu for 4,000 years, <laughs> and the car that you follow pulls up there, and it's all brand new to them. <laughs> and you're in a hurry, aren't you? Yeah. Amen? We can aggravate it. The best thing about my Lord and Savior is He knows me and loves me anyway. Right. Yeah. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm so much like my father, so impatient and all these other things, and he loves me anyway. Yeah. I have to be honest with you, I don't have that kind of love, naturally. Mm -hmm. I try to be a loving pastor yeah. and a husband and father. Don't you all? Amen. But I'm telling you every now and then, I want to revile back at the world. I want to yell back at them. I want to take my vengeance upon them. God says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Yeah. You got somebody mistreating you, the Bible says, if somebody persecutes you, what does he say? Go whoop them? Yeah. Which is what we'd like to do. Amen. He said, pray for them. Yeah. Wow. I don't know about you, but sometimes my prayers are like this. Lord, please help them. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We pray for them through our teeth because we're still mad at them. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he tells us to pray for them. Pray for those that persecute you. That's a big difference between us and him hanging on the cross. Every time I think I'm where I'm supposed to be with the Lord, he reminds me of the cross and how different I am than he is. Amen. He has a love that saved the world. Amen. Amen. Look at your Bibles of 1 Peter chapter 2 now. Right along the same lines here. Meekness is not a weakness. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 20. What glory is it when you're buffeted for your faults? You shall take it patiently. That word buffeted means you're being punished for your faults. You take that verse patiently. But if when you do right or well and you suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Now that's hard to do. Yeah, if I've done wrong, I've got it coming to me. Let's put it in a lame of terms. But when I'm doing right and you're picking on me, you're mistreating me, uh, and I take it patiently, he says, that's acceptable with God. The other's not. And look, the thing about Christ, he never asked you to do anything that he didn't do himself. Look what he said. For even here unto you, you're called unto this. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. That wipes us all off the face of the map, I'll tell you right there. Amen. 
Who, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. In other words, when they yelled at him, he yelled back. He didn't yell back. When he suffered, he didn't threaten, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Committed himself to God. Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Verse 24 back in Galatians 5 said this, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. In other words, God has a place for our fleshly thoughts. God has a place for our sinful flesh. It was paid for through His flesh. Amen. He says, look, our sinful thoughts, our sinful ways, our lustful ways <coughs> have been nailed to the cross. Amen. He took care of our faults. He took care of our sin, our lusts. Our wantonness, our anger, all these things he he paid for them by remaining sinless and spotless. That's the only way God would accept it. And he finishes this way. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. You claim to have the spirit of God in you, he said, look, that's how you're supposed to walk. Amen? Yeah. I'm not talking about how you physically walk. It's how you live. If you live in the Spirit, he said, walk in it. Walk in the Spirit. <laughs> when we talk about crucifixion as we close, listen to this. It's what, it's what Jesus endured on the cross for us. And it's what we're called to carry every day. He says, hey, you carry his cross. You can't be my disciple." You're going through difficulties and doing through pain. You're more like Christ at that very moment than you are any other time. You're identifying with pain, with hurt, with being mistreated. But not to that level. Amen? Yeah. The cross reminds us that the death of the flesh is uncomfortable and it's painful. Nobody... Nobody likes to let go of their alcohol. Nobody likes to let go of their drugs. Nobody likes to let go of their pornography. They don't like to let go of their temper. They don't like to let go of their pride. We don't like to let go of all these things. It's painful to give up those things that we are doing. We like them. We like the flesh. We like the very thing that God sent His Son to die for. We like sin. And I know nobody would say amen, but we like sin or we would quit it. Yeah. We try, but you can't do it. You can't obey the law. We have to have Christ in our heart. Amen. One more thing. The cross reminds us that our flesh has to be dealt with, dealt with definitely. If you don't deal with your sin debt, your fleshly debt that you have, if you don't deal with that decisively, in other words, if you don't know that you know that you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then you've not dealt with your sin decisively. He dealt with it for us, paid for it on the cross, rose again the third day, defeating death, hell, and the grave. All he asks you to do is say, look, I, I admit that I'm a sinner. The Bible says, for all of sin to come short of the glory of God. There's not one of you here that's free of sin. Amen. You were born into it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I explained about a week ago how that my wife made all these little things out of, out of paper towel rolls. And I said, why are you cutting them in half? She's going to take them to children's church. But she said they hit each other in the head with them. <laughs> so she made them shorter. Made it harder on a wacky shirt on the noggin. Amen. <laughs> Which one of you parents teaches taught your kid to do that? Anybody you trained your kid at home with a paper towel thing to hit the other kid on the head? So here, son. When you get to class, in Miss Alice's class, 
Why come on ahead? Anybody? No. Did you kind of want to? Amen. Have to be careful how we talk to our kids and discipline, don't we? I'm closing in just a minute. My, my boy was little. He was about, about five years old. His best friend would go run up to him in, in uh, Sunday school at Clarks River Baptist Church. And he loved my son so much. He would kiss him and hug him. But one day he got so excited. And he, my son would, would come to us after church. And I won't mention his name because it would embarrass him. He said, he hurts me, Dad. He, he, he squeezes and he does all this stuff to me. And I, he's my buddy, but he hurts. He's so strong. And one Sunday, we was in between class, and, and I finally I told him like that. I shouldn't have done it, but I said, son, next time he hurts you, I said, right back, knock his head off. <laughs> so I'm tired of dealing with this stuff. Amen? So the next time we went to church, my son come out and had blood running down his cheek. His little buddy loved him so much, he bit a chunk out of his cheek. <laughs> Guess what my son did? Knocked his head off, and guess what he did? Ran all over the church. Daddy said I could hit him. Daddy said I could hit him. <laughs> and I was a deacon there and a Sunday school teacher. <laughs> then I, he told everybody. This day, this day wasn't as faithful as it should be. I didn't keep my kids hooked up like they should have been. God forgive me. I'm a better dad now than I was when I was younger. It took a lot of years to figure that how much wrong that I did. Amen. I had to come to a point. And I came to it at Trace Creek Baptist Church <coughs> in revival that I hit my knees before God. I said, God, I know. I know that I'm saved. And I'm not the dad that I should be because I still battle sin. It's still in my life. A whole lot of things that I'm not made right with you, God. And I'm a deacon and I'm a teacher. And I'm a leader of young people. God, I'm asking you to straighten out the rest of my life. I gave you my soul, but my life is still not what it should be. Y'all know what God did for me? He said, I forgive you. Yeah. I ain't, A-I-N apostrophe T, I ain't never looked back. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So maybe you're here today and you're that dad is like I was and you weren't right with God. You can make that right with God. He said, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. You don't have to be afraid to step it in the aisle and come down here and God will deal with you. The Bible says he'll deal with you as his child. He loves you. Right. If you're lost, you've never accepted Christ into your heart. Who's given you a promise that you have tomorrow? God didn't. Right. God didn't, and he won't because he can't. You'd be going against his word. Boast not thyself tomorrow, you don't know what the day may bring forth. Yeah. If that's you, you come. If you want to make this your church home, if God's been dealing with you about that, you come walk down this aisle and tell us, we'll be wonderfully happy to <coughs> take you in and love on you with the best love that we can offer. It's the love of Christ. Whatever your need is, you come today. Obey what the Spirit tells you to do. Do what God tells, tells you to do today. And you'll be pleased. And you'll have heaven as your home. And you come, whatever your need is. If you're like that song I sang, if you're one of those broken ones, he said, come on in. Come on in. Come to me. What are you saying? I'll help you. I'll help you. Do what God tells you to do today.